Damon West, it's good to have you here with us. Father Winter, great yeah, to be it's here. It's such a pleasure, that, uh, your presence here. You know, you're a man who has such a powerful and inspirational story. There you are, you know, in your college years, having everything a young man would want, graduating, being successful, and then losing it all and ending up in prison. And then now you're out speaking, sharing God's love to people in prison and to college students and college athletes. Tell us about your story, about your journey, how God takes you from one place to another. It's been a remarkable journey. Uh, you know, it goes back, I'm a cradle Catholic. Mm -hmm. I was born into a wonderful, loving Catholic home. Mm -hmm. I got an older brother named Brandon, younger brother named Grayson. My mm -hmm. father is named Bob. My mother is named Jeannie. My mm -hmm. mother had this strong devotion to the Blessed Mother growing up. I mean, we would, I remember whenever uh, we would be stuck at a rain out at a baseball game or something like mm -hmm. that, and it would be in her car, and she had one of these little finger rosaries. Do you remember finger rosaries? Mm -hmm. She had one on the little yeah. gear, on the little turn signal thing when they were real small. Right. She'd pull it off and we'd say the rosary. So mm -hmm. she's always been into that. And she had these little prayer plaques and, and crucifixes mm -hmm. all over the house. She couldn't escape God in this woman's home, right? right. So, but. You know, not every family's perfect, and no, nobody's family's perfect, and, and we yeah. had our own problems. In, in 85, I was nine years old, and I came out and told my parents my mm. babysitter had been molesting me, and oh, yeah. childhood sexual abuse in the 80s. They didn't know as mm -hmm. much about it back then as they know now, but my mm -hmm. parents loved me. They sent me to counseling, went and talked to the family priest. We prayed mm -hmm. about it. We prayed a lot, but something inside that little nine-year-old boy went to a really dark place, and by the, time, by the time I was 10, I started getting into my dad's beer in the fridge. I started mm -hmm. sneaking drinks at my friend's houses mm -hmm. whose, whose parents had liquor cabinets. I started smoking cigarettes. By the time I'm 12, I'm smoking pot. So mm -hmm. I'm putting chemicals into my body to change the way I feel. I'm in recovery today. And so I know that being in recovery, I look back on this. These, this is what's called an activating event in, mm -hmm. in life right. because I have the disease of addiction, mm -hmm. but this activated it. So I'm an addict in my early stages of my disease, but mm -hmm. I don't know that yet. Man, mm -hmm. I'm so, so far away from even having a realization of that kind of thing. But I'm a really good athlete, Father, and so mm -hmm. I get a lot of breaks cut to me in life. This is Texas, too, man. Texas yeah. high school football is big. You've, oh, seen, yes. oh, you've yeah. seen the stories. You, you've seen the Friday night <laughs> big lights. Big stadiums Big stadiums. I mean, it, it, they're all, the stadiums and, are like yeah. cathedrals, and the That's players it. are like yeah. gods. And so, and I could throw a football really well. Mm -hmm. And so I got a lot of breaks cut to me in life because of that. I was a three-year mm -hmm. starter on my high school team. Right. And uh, a lot of my behavior, a lot of my character issues mm -hmm got pushed to the side because, hey, Damon's a really mm -hmm. good athlete. And I went off to college. I got a scholarship to play football at the University of North Texas. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, the wheels kind of came off the wagon. I was an altar boy growing up. I was in mm -hmm. church every Sunday. My mom made sure we were in church every Sunday. So from 7 to 18, I never missed a mass. When I got to college, I went to church five times. Those are holidays. I don't, they don't yeah. really even count, do they? I don't, I don't <laughs> Christmas, think, Easter, and all yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, yeah. but that was my life. I, mm -hmm. I, I quit focusing on the, on the things that were important mm -hmm. because that safety net wasn't around me anymore to help push me there. And I went after the things that, that I wanted to party all the time. I was very serious about football, too. All mm -hmm. I wanted to be was a starting quarterback, and I got to be that. Mm -hmm. And eventually I got hurt. I got hurt against Texas A&M in 96, mm -hmm. and I didn't, have, I didn't have a plan B or a plan C. Mm -hmm. I got to a fork in the road, and I made all the wrong choices. Mm -hmm. I started putting in hardcore drugs to change the way I felt, cocaine, ecstasy, mm -hmm. pills, you name it, right. doing it on a party all the time. Somehow, by the grace of God, I graduate from college, go off to Washington, work in Congress, I work for a guy running for president. Mm -hmm. Then I get a job working on Wall Street for one of the biggest Wall Street banks in the world, mm -hmm. UBS. And I'm trained to be a stockbroker. And one day at work, this guy introduces me to methamphetamine. I'm dragging around at work. Mm -hmm. He says, come on down to the parking garage and try this. Father, I took one hit of that, that drug, and I was up mm -hmm. for four days. And I was instantly mm -hmm. hooked. And I gave away everything. And I couldn't give it away fast enough. My mm -hmm. job, my home, my savings, mm -hmm. my car, my family, my tethering to God, my sanity, mm -hmm. the life of an addict. Right. Went from working on Wall Street to living on the streets of Dallas. Mm. And so there I am. I fall in with a bunch of other meth heads. And mm. we start breaking into storage units, start breaking mm. into cars to feed our insatiable meth habits. Mm -hmm. And eventually we start breaking into homes. And, and uh, you know, we did a lot of burgers. Mm. I, um, I hurt a lot of people mm -hmm. by doing the burgers. I have a lot of victims out there. And, and there's no way to, to minimize the amount of pain and hurt and suffering loss that I caused these, mm -hmm. caused these people. Because I didn't just take these people's property. Man, I took their sense of security. Mm -hmm. I took their memories. I mean, mm -hmm. there's things that they'll never get back. But their sense right. of security, I don't know if they ever get that back. You know, there's people going home in Dallas right now, mm -hmm. putting their key in the door, thinking, man, Damon West, that, that mm -hmm. the reason why I locked my door, you know? Mm -hmm. right. um, 
But after about three years of this, on July 30th, 2008, a Dallas SWAT team came in and, and scooped mm -hmm. me up. And I always tell people that wasn't just the day I was arrested. That was the day I was rescued. Oh, God got me yeah. out of a situation yeah. I couldn't get myself out of. There was no way I was leaving that thing alive. And so um, I'm in county jail. And, you know, for the first time in years, I'm going to be sober. And the only mm -hmm. thought I have going through my head is how am I going to get my dope while I'm in here? And mm -hmm. eventually I call home and my mom tells me on the phone call, she's like, baby, you know, you're now a captive audience to God mm -hmm. and you better start listening. There's nothing we can do for you anymore. Right. She said, do you remember that prayer plaque that I had on your wall as a mm -hmm. kid growing up? And I'm, Father, I'm coming off this meth. Mm -hmm. I've been on meth for years and I, I can't think mm -hmm. straight. Right. I was like, no, mama, don't. She said, baby, it was footprints in the sand. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the story of footprints in the sand? Oh, yeah. And, you know, through the tears, I told my mom, no, I don't. And so, she patiently and lovingly, like a mother, retold me the story of Footprints in the Sand about mm -hmm. a guy walking on the beach with Jesus. And, you know, every time something good happens in this guy's life, they're watching a video in the sky. And every time something good happens, there's two sets of footprints mm -hmm. walking side by side. But right. when there's something bad, when there's pain, hurt, suffering, loss, when he loses his football mm -hmm. career, it's one set of footprints. And she said, the guy got so upset with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, you know, God, what's up, man? Every time something good happens to me, you're there with me. But when something bad happens, you abandon mm -hmm. me. She said, that's when God said, Damon, you fool. Every time you saw one set of footprints, I didn't abandon you. I carried yeah. you. And so my mom kept drilling that into me, you know. In county jail, I was there for 10 months. And, and all I could think about in that 10 months is I can't wait to get probation and get out of here and get high again. Mm -hmm. But at the end of 10 months, a jury of my peers sat there after six days of trial mm -hmm. and sentenced me to 65 years in prison. Oh, wow. 65 years, Father. That's a life mm -hmm. sentence in Texas. Right. And uh, that was rock bottom, you know. Uh, and rock bottom can be a good foundation to build a life on mm -hmm. if you're receptive to it. Mm -hmm. But that's really where I was stripped of everything. And I, I'm getting ready wow. to go in the Texas prison system and this, this inmate in there mm -hmm. named Mr. Jackson gave me the coffee bean analogy, which I right. think y'all played earlier. Mm -hmm. and, and that coffee bean analogy really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the tools I took with me into that prison environment. Wow. And prison is where I yeah. changed. Well, th this, is, this is amazing. And we're going to take a break right now. But after the break, we're going to speak about how you had this experience and encounter with Jesus Christ in prison. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what you're doing now. Absolutely. So, yeah. More with Damon West after the break.